What is going on college basketball fans? Today I'm going to give you guys five of my top mid-major teams that I think could not only make the NCAA tournament this year, but could get a win, get an upset win, and maybe even go on a Cinderella run. I know we're still kind of early, um, still three months away from March and March Madness, but there's some teams that I'm already eyeing up that I think you guys should take a look at and, and be prepared to maybe pick them to get upset in your brackets. All right, and before we get started, I just want to give some honorable mentions by all, and also mentioning teams like Gonzaga, FAU, San Diego State, Memphis are all kind of solidified top tier mid-major teams that we know are going to be in March Madness and that we know have the potential to possibly make a deep run in March Madness. So those teams, um, those sorts of teams, those top mid-major teams that we know are going to be in March, I'm leaving off of this list. This is more for your Cinderella type teams. So before we get into our top five, I have a couple of honorable mentions. And these two honorable mentions that I am going to name are only not in the top five because I believe there are a better team in their conference that I think could win their league and kind of steal the bid away from them. And those honorable mentions, first off, is St. Joseph's. There is a team that I believe in the A-10 that is going to be able to have a better chance of making a run if they win the A-10 and make it into the March Madness tournament. Um, but St. Joseph so that has had an awesome, surprising start to the season so far. They've upset a team like Villanova. They've looked really, really good. Um, definitely keep your eye out for St. Joseph's. My other honorable mention is Indiana State. They have some really good players. They're 9-1 and one on the season so far. Robbie Buckets is definitely a guy that I can see getting into March and, and then pulling off an upset and all of America watching March Madness, just falling in, falling in love with this guy, watching him play. Um, so unique, so fun to watch. And Indiana State, definitely an honorable mention, but there is a team in the Missouri Valley that I believe has a better shot at winning that league, making March Madness, and making a run if they make the tournament. Well, coming in here at number five, I have the Dayton Flyers. This is the team in the A-10 that I believe has a better chance than St. Joseph's. They have, in my opinion, played one of the harder schedules for any of these mid-majors that are on my uh, list here today as far as the non-con schedule. They have already beaten teams like St. John's, SMU, and LSU on the season so far three pretty decent teams you know LSU not that great but a power five SEC team that they did get the win over and they've also played a very close game against Northwestern which in my opinion is a very solidified top 25 team at this point the only team to beat Purdue so far this season and they almost were able to knock them off they also played Houston already this year um, did not play them that close but you know um, kept it within arm's reach for some parts of that game and, and Houston is definitely a top tier team so if nonetheless that is good practice for what they could be seeing in the first round of March a skill level similar to what Houston's is I definitely believe that if Dayton can make the March Madness tournament if they can win the A-10 championship this year the Flyers could definitely make a run or at least pull off an upset they have one of the best forward duos not only in the mid majors but in all of college basketball darren holmes the second is an absolute stud at the power forward position 16 points per game seven rebounds per game he is a beast and then nate santos the small forward 13 points seven rebounds a game one of the best forward duos in the country and I definitely think that Dayton can make a run. The only question marks I have, they do have some pretty decent guards, but the guard depth and really the depth in general kind of scares me for the Flyers. I'm not sure if they have the bench to be able to make a deep run, but I definitely could see them pulling off an upset if they make it to March. And here at number four, I do have UNC Greensboro, North Carolina Greensboro, and they're, they're definitely a team that I was on the fence about, but looking more into it, they beat Arkansas already this year. Um, they have Michael Brown Jones, who's averaging 20 points per game, seven rebounds a game. They have good guards and Atwell and the Langley brothers, Kobe Langley. And when you have brothers on one team, it always kind of, it, it always kind of feels like those type of teams do really well in March Madness, or at least 
when you have a mid-major. Immediately what comes to mind is like Cody and Caleb Martin from Nevada. They were able to make the Sweet 16 um, back in 2018. That was a very fun Nevada team out of the Mountain West to watch. And I definitely think that UNC Greensboro could be a sleeper um, to keep your eye out for. Like I said, they already got a win over Arkansas this year. They have some pretty good players. Keep your eye out for the Spartans. Coming in here at number three, I do have Grand Canyon University. Grand Canyon is always one of my favorite teams to watch whenever they do have somebody really good coming into town. Um, San Diego State going to Grand Canyon was one of the favorite, my favorite games that I've watched so far this season. The atmosphere was amazing. I definitely got to go to a Grand Canyon game sometime in my life. It is a bucket list place for me to go to. And Grand Canyon, they have one of the more underrated players in the country on their team when they have Dion Grant Foster. He's averaging 21 points per game, six rebounds per game, and also an assist per game. He is a six foot seven shooting guard. He is such a stud. And if you have not watched Grand Canyon yet this year, go watch him. Look at Tyon Grant Foster. He is such a great player. And they also have another really good guard guard and Ray Harrison who's averaging 16 points per game they have really good wins like I said over San Diego State Liberty they look really good look out for the loops this season you might just be looking at your bracket and say wow that national monument just upset a top five seed and here at number two this is the other team from the Missouri Valley Conference that knocked Indiana State off my list down to the honorable mentions. And that is the Drake Bulldogs. I feel like the Drake Bulldogs are a very well coached team and they have been in the mix of the NCAA tournament, making it to the NCAA tournament or just missing out on it the last couple of years. And I feel like this could be maybe finally the year that they not only make the tournament again, but are able to get a win or maybe even a couple of wins in the tourney they have a really good player dev reese he's averaging 20 points per game seven rebounds a game and three assists per game a lot like tyon grant foster he's a six foot seven shooting guard who is just a absolute beast and very very fun to watch and another very very underrated player um in the country they have all they have a lot of really good guards kevin overton aiden wright um they have a really good forward and darnell brody I mean, they have a very solid squad, and that is why they're all the way up here at number two. There's only one mid-major team that I believe has a better chance at being a Cinderella this year than the Drake Bulldogs. Drake looks really good, though, and it would not surprise me at all if they made it to the Sweet 16. Coming in here at number one, my favorite mid-major so far this year, and I think is a team that could definitely make a run this year is the New Mexico Lobos. They are 9 and 1 on the season so far and they have a lot of really good players and a lot of really good depth and not only that but a lot of really good guard depth. Amazing guards. They have sophomore Donovan Dent who is a absolute stud averaging 17 six and 7 assists on the season. What a beast. Only a sophomore too. Also Jamal Mashburn, we all know him. He was a beast last year. He's a beast again this year. 18 points per game. Jalen House, 13 points per game. And they also have the freshman forward, JT Toppin, who is a absolute stud of a freshman. Super fun to watch. They also have another really good guard, a fourth good guard in True Washington, um, who is also a freshman, just like JT Toppin. A lot of really good guards. A lot of really good depth here on this New Mexico team. And they might just be a sleeper to not only make it to the NCAA tournament, but maybe even win the Mountain West Conference and a very stacked Mountain West Conference where you have San Diego State, Boise State, Nevada, and teams like Utah State. Like It's a very, very stacked um, Mountain West Conference, but I think New Mexico definitely has a case. I'm still going to give the edge to San Diego State because they're more proven, but I think no matter what, New Mexico State is getting an at-large bid and they will be in the tournament. I think that they could definitely get an upset and maybe even make a run as a Cinderella this year in the 2024 March Madness Tournament. Let me know what you guys think about my list. Do you guys think that my list is valid? Who do you guys think got snubbed? Who is a mid-major that's not on this list that you think could pull off an upset in this year's tournament and make a deep run? I'm definitely interested to hear what you guys have to say. And yeah, guys, subscribe for more college basketball content. We got a ton of it coming. 
later on this weekend we are going to have our full updated March Madness predictions where we predict the March Madness tournament from the round of 64 all the way to the national championship. We're going to have one of those coming out this weekend and a ton more college basketball content as well. So subscribe if you guys are new. And yeah, guys, thank you so much for watching.